Mr. Inglis from South Carolina. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I request permission to address the House for five minutes for rising spending. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, um, a number of uh, physicians would tell you that um, longevity is based only on genetic makeup. Um, but you might ask them, uh, doctor, if I were to diet and exercise safely, might I extend my life? Well, most physicians would say, if you can do it safely, go ahead. That's really what I think we should be talking about when it comes to climate change. If we can do it safely as to the economy, we should act. If we can't do it safely, then we should hold up. In the case of uh, cap and trade, which is past this floor, unfortunately, you know, it's pending now over in the other body, um, it can't be done that way. In other words, it will harm the economy. We're talking about a tax increase in the midst of a recession. We're talking about a Wall Street trading scheme that would make uh, some traders blush. And it punishes American manufacturing. So for all those reasons, cap and trade, I wish, were off the table. Hopefully, um, falls apart over in the other body. But then the question is, could we act in some way that's sort of like the longevity question, might not extend our lives, but on the other hand, would it hurt us? And in this case, what we're looking for is something that would work, that wouldn't hurt us, that wouldn't hurt our economy. And uh, what I've proposed is a 15-page alternative to the 1,200-page cap and trade. And that 15 pages describes a tax cut on payroll and a shift onto emissions. The result being that we would change the economics of the incumbent fossil fuels and begin replacing them with better fuels that can create jobs and improve the national security of the United States. Along the way, though, big debate about whether the climate change models are right. And it's very important that we get it right as to those models, but that process is going to take a long time. It's going to take a long, longer time with this setback here recently with the uh, revelation that uh, various climate data has been manipulated. What we have here is a teachable moment for all scientists everywhere that when this kind of misconduct occurs, the result is all of science is questioned. It's not a good result uh, because the reality is we need this science to advance and we need it to advance in a transparent way where the evidence can be pushed on and replicated if it's accurate. If it's not accurate and can't be replicated, it's rejected. But in the rejection, we learn and science advances. So I join with uh, Ranking Member Hall in asking for a full investigation of these revelations about the manipulation of data, because we need to get to the bottom of it, especially on the Science Committee. We need to use this as a teachable moment to figure out how to advance science, true science, without manipulation of data and calling to account those who have manipulated data. In the process, we'll all learn a lot about the climate models, we'll advance science, and we'll make better public policy. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back to balance my time. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Illinois rise? 